What do you get when you combine 6,000 pounds of potatoes, a master distiller, a beautiful state-of-the-art copper German vertical still, and the happiest pigs on Prince Edward Island? The answer, lots of flavor on Food Country. One of the best parts about living where I do, out in the countryside here in Eastern Prince Edward Island, is that when I run out of vodka, I don't have to go to the liquor store to get more. I go right to the still, right to the source. And it's a beautiful still too. It's, it's German and it's copper and it's big and it's tall and it makes some of the only true potato vodka in all of the world, really. So I'm on my way to see my friend Julie, see what she's up to today. Check on the pigs, the happiest pigs on Prince Edward Island live at this distillery. When you know the distiller, you get to go in the back door. Hi, Julie. Hey, Michael. How's it going? Good, how are you doing? Good, Good. to see you. Nice to see you too. Julie Shore comes from a long line of master distillers, so it was no surprise when she opened her own vodka distillery. But it was surprising when she decided to take advantage of the unlimited supply of local potatoes. Fact is, 99% of the world's vodka is made from grain, not potatoes. So Julie's artisan approach is winning awards. You grind 6,000 pounds of potatoes, you pump them into this giant steam jacketed vessel. Yes. And you cook them. Cook them down. And what does that do? Why do they need to be cooked? Well, we're just trying to get the starch down to something simple, broken into pieces for the yeast to go after easily. Okay, so you're basically making the potato starch easily digestible by the yeast that comes next. Yes. But the yeast doesn't get added here. Not here. Then it's pumped over here, and these are the fermentation tanks. Ah, so here's where the good stuff happens. Yes. This is where you stir in the yeast. Yeah. Okay. Potatoes, uh, just about finished firming me up here, Michael. So how many gallons are we looking at there? Thousand gallon tank. Half full. Five hundred gallons of, of what? Is it is it booze at this point? It'd be like a like a beer. Some people call it a beer. Sure. Yeah. So it is alcoholic now, of course. Yes. Right, because that is the distillation process. Because you already have alcohol in the the beer, so to speak, and the the still pulls that alcohol out. Right. Separates you it. You have to have some alcohol to work with when you take it to the still. Right. So that's what fermentation's for. And that's what happens up here in these big tanks. Yes. And then the fun stuff begins. Yes. So can you drink this? Like, can you actually taste it? Absolutely. You want to try some? Yeah. How do you get in there, though? Well, I, uh, I kind of created something to, to help me because I'm a little short, so when I'm not fly fishing, just attach my little cup measure. <laughs> we'll do uh, some beer fishing. Yeah, this is fishing uh, North Shore style. I don't quite know what I'm about to taste here. Actually, it does. It tastes like beer. Mm -hmm. It totally tastes like beer. It doesn't particularly taste all that good, but the Not magic yet. is yet to come, right? That's right. Now we make vodka. Now. Now we have some alcohol to work with. So we go from fermentation into the still. This is my favorite part. I, I you know, I... I don't fully understand everything that goes on with this still of yours, but it's just, it's just undeniably cool looking. Julie explained that distillation is actually a very simple process. Just ferment something sweet, gently boil it, and because alcohols are lighter than water, they evaporate first. Julie also knows that there are different alcohols, so she discards the first cut, it's poisonous methanol. The second cut, that's the good stuff. The third, well, it's drinkable, but there are noticeable side effects. And the only thing missing on this rig of yours, there ought to be a tap on here somewhere, don't you think? You know, just hold your mug under it, you know well, what I'm saying? Why don't you bring this file here? You got your mug? Did you bring it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, of course, this isn't the first time I've tried this. And one of the things that I always notice about your vodka 
the next day is pretty easy. Yeah. You know, there, you don't really get a hangover. No hangover. Can I say that on TV? I think I can. There's an ongoing study. <laughs> yeah, so why, why is that? And you were mentioning the third. I mean, yeah. how is that? What causes hangovers and what can you do to knock that off? Yeah, it's that last cut, very distinctive cut that we make. Um, the last cut carries um, some impurities, some fusel oils, and that's what makes you not feel so good in the morning. Good. Then on behalf of all the vodka drinkers and Prince Edward Island, thank you. Thank pleasure. you so much. Woo! Bang zoom. <laughs> oh, it's good stuff. Good stuff. But I'm not the only one around here who enjoys potato vodka. So where did you get the idea to take all the leftovers and feed them to pigs? Well, it just seemed to make sense. Uh, I'm only using 10% of the nutrient value, so the mash still has a lot of nutrients. Mm -hmm. So why throw it out? Why not? Why not just raise pigs in the, in the backyard and feed them the leftover vodka mash? Julie raises Heritage Berkshire pigs, old school pork with lots of fat and flavor. They love the mash, but not because it's boozy. It's not. They eat it up because it's tasty and nutritious. It's perfect pig food. Are you as happy as the pigs are? Oh, always. Well, me too, because now I get to do my part. I'm going to head back to my kitchen and create something that uses potatoes, potato vodka, All right. and pig, fresh pork. Well, that sounds like it's going to be good already. Yeah, I think so. Nice. So for that, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for everything. Always good to see you, Michael. We'll see you next time. Right on.